tonight is Joe Hanfman, who is a Howard County Bird Club member, board member, and the field trip coordinator. He's going to talk about um, his visits to Alaska. He's gone there nine times between 2000 and 2016 and uh, plans to do some more in the future. Uh, he's going to describe his experiences birding in Southeast Alaska, the Kenai Peninsula, Anchorage to Fairbanks, Nome and the Seward Peninsula, Gamble, St. Paul Island, and the Aleutians to Attu. So without further ado, Joe, take it away. Hey, thank you very much, Mary. Okay, let's see. Can you see that? Not yet. Kelsey, did, you, did she have to start something? No, it, it should be good. Okay, it's show and share. Presentation coming up yet? Nope. No. <laughs> Okay, we had this. It worked earlier, so we know it can work. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's try it this way. There we go, something's okay. happening. There you go, thank you. I clicked on the minimize screen on my computer. So I went back to the one on the presentation. Okay, let me see if I can make this a full screen. F5. Is that better? It's good. Okay. Okay, well, thank you all. First, what I'd like to do is just give an overview of Alaska from the folks that haven't been there. Most people would fly into Anchorage, um, right above the Kenai Peninsula, or you could possibly fly into Fairbanks, north of there, or even take a cruise to Southeastern Alaska. Some of the places that I will be describing today will be um, the Kenai Peninsula, which is at the bottom of Alaska, the Seward Peninsula, which is on the west side where Nome is, out on St. Lawrence Island in the upper Bering Sea and the town of Gamble. If you come down from there, you will see St. Paul Island, better known as the Pribilofs, and then all through the Aleutians, where you go out from um, the Aleutians, you'll pass Dutch Harbor, you get to Adak, which was the Navy base built in 1943 during World War II. And you'll go past the island of Kiska and out to the end of the Aleutians to Attu. So I'll bounce around a little bit. I'll show a few pictures from these places and then we'll get right into the birds. Okay, what we have here, um, this is an aerial view of um, St. A corner of St. Lawrence Island, and this is the town of Gamble. From Gamble, if you look across, this, this is actually 48 miles across, and you can see these mountains out here with snow. You're actually, you can see Russia. And so this is Siberia. And oddly enough, this picture was taken the day that John McClain uh, picked Sarah Palin as his running mate. I won't say any more on that. On Gamble, um, one of the places that uh, people spend most of their time birding are the boneyards. Uh, there are three main boneyards on there where mostly it's walrus bones and the remains of walrus, some whale and seal. And as you can see in the lower left-hand corner, the occasional human bones that are mixed in there in the boneyards. It's pretty much flat 
And with the, all these holes in there, you get um, migrants coming over from Asia. And this is one of the first places that they see. And they drop down into these boneyards and there's holes in there um, where the natives are digging for old ivory. And they will dig through this and the birds like to go into the holes for cover. So you can walk around the boneyards and turn up a lot of rarities. This upper left-hand corner, this is um, from a walrus. And you can actually see this hole in the uh, walrus bone um, where it was actually shocked by the natives. Then we'll go out to um, Atu at the end of the Aleutians. And this is the Atu Hilton. Um, Larry Balch and Atours, this is where the folks used to stay. When I was there, fortunately, I did not stay in this rat infested place. I stayed on a ship, which was much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> on um, Atu, um, if you're into history, it's pretty much amazing. Uh, the main picture here, this is Debris Beach, and you see all this leftover debris from World War II. At the time, it had the highest casualty rate in the war at the Battle of Attu. And this, um, on the lower left-hand corner, is a 105 millimeter howitzer shell that's still live. You find lots of munitions lying around. Uh, you could find guns, hand grenades, um, like this howitzer shell and all kinds of other stuff. Like here are three uh, US uh, helmets just left there. This is an anti-aircraft gun at the upper uh, part that was um, actually installed after the Battle of Attu because in this area, the Japanese actually held it. And the US allowed the Japanese to come back and build the peace memorial here, which is at the top of Batu, to all the soldiers that fought in this battle. One of the other places um, to visit um, is ADAC, and this is the Navy base at ADAC that has since been abandoned. Right now, there are only about 80 people left in the um, hundreds and hundreds of buildings that are on ADAC. And then we have uh, St. Paul Island in the Pribilof. If you've ever seen the Deadliest Catch show, uh, this is the main place where they would come in and bring their fish back. It's a much quicker, uh, a shorter ride for the boats to bring your fish back into Trident, which is the fish processing plant uh, in the Pribilof, rather than have to go all the way down to the Aleutians to Dutch Harbor. On the Pribilofs are the largest group of um, where, um, where we have a cellar uh, sea lion here, but the northern fur seals, over 400,000 northern fur seals um, are on the island. And they have these walkways where you can walk above them, mostly for the scientists that are studying them. These are all crab pots. And since the island's flat, you can walk between the crab pots and you find um, lots of birds hanging out in the crab pots and perching on them. Now we'll get into more of the birds. Okay, this um, is an emperor goose that was um, on Gamble. This is an interesting one I wanted to show because um, I believe that a lot of these birds get overlooked. And this is a widgeon that you're looking at here. But um, it's a female, you can tell, but it's a Eurasian widgeon. And you can see it would be very easy to overlook it if we had it here. The males are much easier to spot, but it's a lot richer in color than our American widgeon. This bird we found in a mud puddle, basically, next to these reeds um, out on Attu. 
and it's a female, and you see this little spot at the base of the bill, it's a buckow teal. Uh, two beginning birders from Florida, two la older ladies had studied their book. They saw this bird and took a picture of it. And when they caught up with Larry Balch, who was the guy who created Atours on Atu, and they asked him if a buckow teal would be a rare bird. And he had said, he had, 20, he had been to Atu 27 times and had never seen one. And then they showed him the picture in their camera. I won't repeat what he said, but um, he did go back and see the bird. And here we have another female bird, one that would be easy to overlook and I think extremely difficult to identify to subspecies. But this is a green-winged teal. And this is a, um, the Eurasian green-winged teal, female. All around Alaska and many other places, um, it's very easy to see uh, Barrow's golden eyes. Some might say this is the um, state bird of Alaska the harm again. I would probably argue that the mosquito really probably deserves um, that instead of the willow arm again, but it's still a very cool bird to see. Another tarm again that you can get um, in Alaska and these bird, uh, are all over um, ADAC and this is a rock tarm again. Here we're getting into our loons. And if you look at the base, you see it um, paler here uh, towards the rump. And this is an Arctic loon as compared to this handsome loon here, a Pacific loon. Would be possible to see this in uh, Maryland, but not in this plumage. And one of the prizes that people really like is this very large loon, which this is the yellow-billed loon. One of the ones that I think someday we're gonna get um, in Maryland at Centennial Lake. There was one in 2004 on a lake in Georgia. So no reason we couldn't get it here. Going through uh, the the Aleutians, I um, got this lace and albatross, and we actually had hundreds of them. At one point, we had about 800 flying around the ship. But the real prize that we were looking for, these are the, um, the same species, two different ages of um, short-tailed albatross, which is um, a very large albatross. And here you can see we have three different species of albatrosses um, in the same picture. Um, Black-footed here, Laysan, and here's a short-tailed. All these birds in the center, these darker birds, are northern fulmars, and uh, the gull is a glaucous wing gull. One bird that you hope to see, um, you need some uh, good wind and a little bit of luck is model petrel. And a bird that is usually pretty easy to see at the right time is the short-tailed shearwater. Looks very similar to a sooty shearwater, um, not as silvery under the wing as our sooties. And sometimes you can get a lot of these um, short-tailed shearwaters. This flock we estimated was 1.5 million with 30 plus humpback whales uh, diving and feeding in there. Uh, it was one of the most impressive things I've seen in wildlife. The whales would come up and blow and from their blowholes when they um, would blow up, um, frequently they would just 
spout and blow a shear water farther up into the air. The shear waters weren't hurt. On the right, we have a um, leech storm petrel, which you can get off the coast of um, Maryland. And then this left hand bird is a fork tailed uh, storm petrel. One bird we were very excited to see. Um, this bird, I got the picture of it just outside of a place called Stalemate Bank. So technically I was no longer in the US. So a person on this call, um, get, or actually two folks, uh, Gail McKernan and Barry Cooper, got the first ever in the AVA area. Congratulations to those folks. This one, we were able to um, confirm it in Russia. So we were about maybe a mile away from the U.S. border. Joe, uh, we had uh, we went over in 2007 and we had them in Russia, uh, just like you did. And it wasn't until 2011 that we caught up with them in uh, in U.S. waters. And I remember I saw your report. I was real excited because. We were doing figure eight in the uh, ship at Stalemate Bank, and we were on the top part of the figure eight. And I we estimated we had left the US. And um, if the bird had followed us around, we could have gotten it in the US. And that was two, in 2006. But um, that was great find that you and Barry got from your cruise ship. What was the, bird? What was the species? Providence petrel or Solander's petrel. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I don't recall that being said. Thank you. Here we have uh, two different cormorants. Uh, uh, on the left, we have a red-faced cormorant, and then the thin-bill um, pelagic cormorant here on the right. One of our golden plovers. You can see blends in really well with this seaweed like stuff. And but this is a Pacific golden plover. Similar um, to a semi palmated plover, but if you look closely, one of the things you'll see is this white stripe above the eye. And this is the common ringed plover. And here we have a bristle thighed curlew. Um, usually a pretty good walk outside of Nome. If you go up the Cougarock Road to Coffee Dome and the hill across from it, uh, that's where they breed. Very long distance migrant we have here. Can fly all the way down to New Zealand, Australia. Um, Occasionally they stop in Hawaii, but sometimes they don't. These are bar-tailed godwits. Here I put these in for a comparison. The bird on the right we have um, in Howard County, and this is a pectoral sandpiper. Now if you look at the one on the left, this is a sharp-tailed sandpiper, very similar. Um, the sharp-tailed is a little bit um, richer. The sharp-tailed we had in Maryland did not have this rufous, and it was a much older bird uh, than the one I have pictured here. This bird is one that we always look for, and frequently um, Sanderlings that are uh, changing in plumage get misidentified as, but this is a redneck stint. Here we have a um, rock sandpiper. Which one? Um, Privilofs. This bird. Um, on a very snowy day in um, early June, 
um, a little bit of a blizzard out on Gamble showed up, and this is a jack snipe. This snipe that looks similar to ours, when it uh, flies away, you will see the trailing edge of white on its wing, um, similar to the Wilson snipe, but this is a common snipe. And here we have a red fowler rope. Some of you may remember the red fowler rope that Bill Hill found at Western Regional Park. Um, was in a transitional plumage, unlike this winter plumage one that we're seeing here. One of our tattlers, and this is a gray-tailed tattler. This medium to large size uh, shorebird is a common green shank. And then here we have the spotted red shank. Very large um, Jaeger. You can see the twisted tail on it. Um, this is a Pomeranian Jaeger. And then this dark morph Jaeger here is a parasitic Jaeger. And this one, probably a little easier to identify in this plumage. Jaegers can be very difficult if you don't have them in their breeding plumage, but this is a long-tailed Jaeger. Here we have a couple murrelets. If we look in the upper left, um, the darker brownish one is a um, marbled murrelet. And then to the right, these are Kitlitz murrelets. This group of ancient murrelets fairly good size auklet, uh, a parakeet auklet right here. As compared to this little guy, this is a least auklet, very tiny. Fit and would fit in your hand. And this is the bird that people really, um, if you want to go to the Aleutians, the bird, uh, one of the number one birds people would want to see. And this is a whiskered auklet. Whiskered auklets, you can get a thousand of them at the Baby Islands, which is just before Dutch Harbor in the Aleutians, one of the few places that there's a good concentration of them. Here we have crested and least auklets sitting on the rocks and gamble. This looks, this gull looks something like the one that was at Sandy Point a few years ago. And this juvenile is a black leg kitty wake. And this one, I'll let you kind of figure out what it is yourself. I'll give you some clues. The mantle is darker than a black leg kitty wake, and it has red legs. Here we have a gull that lost its name, now it has a new name. This is the, uh, used to be the mew gull, it's now the short-billed gull. This gull is probably fairly easy to identify as a herring gull, but if you look at the rump, you'll see the rump is fairly pale. Um, the broad band on the tail um, out here um, between the primaries and the secondaries, um, much paler, and the kind of checkered pattern on the back. When you put all those together, you have a Vega herring gull, so the subspecies Vega herring gull. 
This is kind of a ratty looking gull, but still really cool, exciting to see. This is a slatyback gull. Another one of our large gulls, a glaucus gull here. Badass gull. I didn't hear, what'd you say, Jeff, or Jay? Badass gull. Oh, yes. <laughs> here um, we have an Arctic tern. Um, I, just a really fun bird to see. Uh, most people give this bird credit for the longest migration of any uh, birds. I would like to argue that the Wilson storm petrel get, has a longer migration because a Wilson storm petrel zigs and zags its whole way. So if you count the actual miles flown rather than the straight line distance, the Wilson storm petrel may beat it. But still, it's awesome to see these all around Anchorage and uh, over Alaska. Here probably doesn't need an introduction. But, um, there are places in Alaska, some years you can get a lot, other years not so many. Um, that's Snowy Owl. Just outside of Anchorage, I got a tip that um, there was a breeding American three-toed woodpecker. And thanks to Dave Sonneborn telling me what park to go to and found it right in its hole. This monster was out on um, ADAC, had a few of them out there, uh, would hunt um, rock ptarmigans and other birds, basically anything it wanted to. And this is a jeer falcon. And this is one of the rarest birds that I have seen in Alaska. Kurt, can you tell me what it is? <laughs> I believe that was the, was that the first record for Eastern Phoebe in Alaska? Yes, Kurt was with me, yeah. And we had um, breeding Eastern Phoebes on the Seward Peninsula at Nome. Totally crazy, very exciting, but an Eastern Phoebe. And was that three-toed woodpecker the one we went to see in the hole in that one park? Is that the, yes, it was. Yes, same mm -hmm. one, okay. Yeah. This was on a um, very bad weather day. The um, right around the time when the Jack Snipe, the earlier picture I showed, most of the people didn't want to leave the lodge because the weather was so bad. It was blowing from the east. Um, we did not expect any Asian birds to make it there. I went out. And I found this brown shrike somehow had flown across and it made it um, to gamble. Maybe it was just on the other end of the island. Could have been that, you know, he might have overshot it because nobody ever goes to the other side of the island. This was one of the first records of a red breasted nuthatch in the Aleutians. Um, it, you can see how thin it is in the um, throat and uh, um, the upper breast where it had burned up all its fat reserve and just landed on our ship and would, would land on people. You feed it anything? Uh, yeah, we put out some suet and um, on the back of the ship, we had suet hanging in there. We had water. And we had a bunch of trees that had been cut in Anchorage and we had strapped them to the back of the ship because we had the whole ship. So we had a little forest there. It was kind of like a joke, but we got a few birds like this um, nuthatch and orange crown warbler that actually landed in there. And even some seabirds that would hang around there like fork-tailed storm petrels and leeches storm petrels that would land on the ship and they were more comfortable in our small forest. Here we have an American Dipper. One of the old world warblers, a willow warbler. 
This is a common chiff chaff, the Siberian uh, variety of it. Some folks think it's a separate sub, uh, um, separate species. ABA hasn't recognized it yet, so it's common chiff chaff. Another um, warbler, it has a, um, migrates from the north to the south. This is an Arctic warbler. This picture I'll give is not mine. I borrowed it from a friend. It, Kevin Zimmer got this uh, blue throat. And Kevin was the first person to um, find blue throat uh, breeding outside of Nome back in the 80s. Here we have a northern wheat ear. Found several of these out on um, ADAC, um, the old Navy base. And this is an eyebrowed thrush. Back on the mainland, you can get varied thrushes. Spurred is, this is an Eastern yellow wagtail. And here we have the white wagtail. One of the rare pipits that we can get out, out in, um, this was actually on Gamble, so pretty far out. And this is a red-throated pipit. You would get this one or um, the other pipit is a Japonicus, a very dark American pipit. Red very red. large wax wing we are looking at here. You can just see a little bit of the red undertail, the gray body, a bohemian wax wing. A bird that you learn to ignore, which is kind of a shame um, because there's so many of them. Um, Lapland longspur, um, maybe the most common bird that you will see out on some of the islands. And here we have a snow bunting being photobombed by a sooty fox sparrow. This is one of the birds that landed in our forest. You can see the trees in the background we had lashed to the back of the ship. This is an orange crown warbler. This bird threw me for a loop for a while when I first saw it. Um, and IDing it, a uh, ju juvenile bird, but it's a white crowned sparrow. And I took this one in Denali. And here we have our golden crowned sparrow. And as a comparison, we have a uh, song sparrow and fox sparrow. Some of the song sparrows that you get out in the Aleutians are just huge. They are as big as fox sparrows. They have a different song. They will work along the edge in the seaweed and picking um, right along the shore. Had a very good day for bramblings out on ADAC or had about 175 in one day, which was an incredible count for the ABA area. And like most of the birds in the Aleutians, they're bigger than the birds that we would see in uh, lower 48. And this is a gray crown rosy finch. This is a female common rose finch. This one is still a species for now. I hope it stays that way, but you see how white it is. A hoary red pole, hoary referring to the white color of it, like the hoar frost. And this is a white wing crossbill. And a trip to Alaska, it's always nice if you get lucky enough to see the great one 
uh, Mount Denali. Um, it's so big that it creates its own weather system. So most of the time it's gonna be um, pretty fogged in. So it's nice to be able to see the entire mountain. And then I threw a few animals in at the end to um, just for fun, the tundra vole here. Um, I would watch the long-tailed Jaegers catch tundra voles and then uh, feed them to each other. Where was this? Uh, that tundra vole was out on Gamble, St. Lawrence Island. Arctic ground squirrel here. A snowshoe hare. See, as a hare, um, the white on the tops of the feet. Some of these hares can be difficult to um, differentiate. This one's a little easier. Obviously, a moose here. And a black bear, which there's quite a few of them around Anchorage. I and think I remember that bear. You do, yeah. Yeah, that was stolen on the road, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, King Kincaid Park. Yeah. <laughs> Here we have a uh, grizzly bear, and you see the ones in Denali are pretty blonde, and they're um, fairly small. If if you get them along the coast, they're brown bears. A brown bear and a grizzly bear are the same species. It's just that if they're on the coast, then they get more salmon. They have more food. And the bears there are much larger. So the inland ones, like in Denali, are smaller. And this one's fairly big, polar bear. And a caribou. These are doll sheep. You can see um, either in Denali or the um, ride along the Cook Inlet. Very fun outside of Nome, a large herd of muskox. We're off of the Kenai Peninsula and even in the Aleutians now, uh, they're back, are sea otters. Humpback whale. These are orcas um, that were, these orcas were hunting northern fur seals. And this is the male with its six foot dorsal fin. And what the male would do, he would swim back and forth across the inlet, getting the fur seals all excited. The female would go underwater for a long way. The seals would see the male and then we would watch the female would sneak in and grab a seal and bring it back and then they'd share it. Good for them, but not too good for the seals. Where was that? Uh, that was in the Pribilofs, uh, St. Paul Island. This is a stellar sea lion and northern fur seals. And my last one is I had to show the, this dog here, the one on the left. His name is Scarface. And she is the one that won the 2004 Iditarod for Mitch Seavey. Took Mitch through a blinding snowstorm where he didn't even know where he was and his dog knew. And she kept on running and got to Nome and Mitch won the Iditarod. So when I saw Mitch Seavey out in Alaska, he hooked up the winner of the Iditarod for my wife and I and took let us ride on the sled and had Scarface pull us. And that was the last one I had. So thank you, folks. <laughs> I'll try to answer any questions if anybody has any. Thank you, Joe. I was wondering um, what months of the year did you go and did you go with the tour group? I've done I've done both. I've gone any uh, from I've been from May through October. And most of the months in between. And I have taken, um, I've gone with some, um, three tours with uh, Vent, Victor Emanuel Nature Tours. I had one with Wings 
and the other times I did on my own. Cool. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Joe, uh, uh, have you been up to, uh, it, I, it's called something different, but Barrow? Barrow, no. Um, I didn't go to Barrow because um, the main reason to go to Barrow is for uh, Ross's Gull, uh, Spectacled Eider, uh, Stellar Eider, and I got all of those without going up there. So I didn't think I was going to pick up anything new up there. Oh, I hope I hope to hit there in June. Yeah, I know it's got a new name. I can't pronounce it. Yeah, it's 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 a just haven't gotten around to learning it yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> May not learn it. It's pretty twisted tongue. Well, the name is Utviagwik now. Okay. <laughs> Easy Do you for remember you to which say. Sorry, what? do you remember which month you saw Denali? Oh, Denali would have been first week in July. Okay, we weren't lucky enough. <laughs> Denali uh, is easier to see in the winter. Okay. Yeah, like I was saying, a lot of times it'll be um, fogged in and you might, uh, clouds over top of it, you might only see the bottom portion. I mean, it's, um, what, 20,000 feet tall. I think half the time we were asking, is that it? Is that it? And they're kind of like, if you have to ask, it's not it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot of birds I hadn't heard of. It's a nice variety. Thank you, Joe. Oh, you're welcome. It was interesting. We got, you got some of our Eastern birds over there. Yeah, we do. And yeah, Alaska has a pretty good list, but um, surprising as big as it is, you would think it would have more. Um, they have 530 or so species, which is good, but Maryland has 459 species, as tiny as we are. More eyes, more people out there birding and listing. Yeah. So did That's, you do any birding in southeast Alaska or, or just in the northern parts? No, I did I, uh, southeast Alaska um, from uh, Skagway to uh, Juneau, um, Ketchikan, um, through there. Ketchikan is really good for um, lots of marbled murrelets. Um, from Skagway, you can go up into the mountains. Um, towards Canada, even if you stay in the U.S. there, you want to make sure you take your passport because the conditions are so rough that U.S. Customs is eight miles inside the U.S. border. So you could stay within the U.S. and then on your way back have to go through U.S. Customs. They don't want to be at the top of the mountain. It's just too brutal. I'll, I'll comment on, on Alaska in that there's two really good shorebird festivals up here, one in Cordova and one in Homer, and they would will be really good targets for people who wanted to visit the state. So we have a person on from this in Alaska right now. Yeah. No, I'm cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Homer is great for sure. The Homer spit in there and you can catch a small plane and go out and see brown bears real close and lots of eagles. First time I went to Homer, I kept pulling over, looking at all the eagles and just there were so many of them. And it seemed like everybody who drove by would stop and ask, are you okay? Are you okay? Even a police officer, I'm thinking he's gonna chase me away. He's just saying, are you okay? And I said, oh, I'm looking at the eagle. Oh yeah, we see him all the time. <laughs> Joe, you can unshare your screen. Okay. Then we can see everybody. Thanks, Chuck. Perfect. Yeah, that should have done it. And everyone's welcome to turn their cameras and mics back on if you want to. So was the bird that you were 
didn't identify that you were leaving up to us? Was it a, a red-legged kittiwake? Yes, it was. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we first saw that bird, there was a lady on the ship with us. That was the main bird she wanted to see. She had seen her life list world was 4,999 and she needed red-legged kittiwake <laughs> for her 5,000 birds. <laughs> we got one. She didn't make it out on the deck in time and missed it. Oh, no. But later on, she, she got plenty of them. Oh, <laughs> you know, good, we, good, good. we saw more. So. Yeah, we didn't get slady back gull. We were steaming east and we had a bunch of sladybacks following the ship and we got to the uh, u.s border and they all turned around and went back they had forgotten their passports ah i hate that <laughs> <laughs> joe did you have any favorite area within alaska yeah i would say my favorite area is Nome. if i could just go yeah. um to one place in alaska it would be Nome. the only place i would put ahead of Nome in the world would be South Georgia Island. Yeah. What is it about Nome that you like? Nome, um, I mean, you got a lot of variety. I mean, it's wide open, um, very interesting birds from, I mean, Aleutian terns, lots of songbirds, um, really cool mammals, muskox. Yeah. Blue the condition, uh, I mean, there's only really one place to stay in um, the Aurora Hotel. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't recommend any place but that. But um, if you can get a room at the Aurora, and then there are three main roads that you drive out. Uh, and each one is about 70 miles or so. You drive out and back. And if you do, uh, when you go to Nome, what I would uh, do when I would drive it on my own, I would... Um, buy two cans of Fix-A-Flat. <laughs> and you definitely want to take along some bear spray. And uh, actually the mayor of Nome at one point gave me his weapon to take. I just put it on the back seat of the car, I rented from him and left it there. But he thought I shouldn't go out in the wild without a weapon. Well, when I was in Alaska, they all laughed about the bear spray thing that wouldn't be effective. <laughs> Yeah, if the bear is charging, I don't think they'd probably slow down. I think it would work if you if you're if you use it right and you spray it towards their feet and it would go up. I think it would stop them. I've heard um, most times. I don't think you're going to need it, but it's better than wearing the bells. Well, the, the bells, bells don't work. <laughs> the, well, the bells sound like a um, like a whistle pig, and then they might think you're ringing the dinner bell. <laughs> bear spray is pretty effective and probably the best thing to do is never go alone yeah mm -hmm. well i didn't see any bears in alaska i was there for two weeks <laughs> come back again i'll show them to you <laughs> good okay <laughs> sounds good if we were walking on a trail where they said there's no bears here they're all down the river fishing and i looked and there was a brand new track the water seeping in it. And I said, we turn around and go back now. <laughs> Never been a group larger than seven attacked. <laughs> Five of us, so. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah. Your yeah. odds are really good that you'll be safe. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But still, you know. It was so all how long do you spend in Nome? Ask it again, Kristen. How long do you spend in Nome? As long as you can. Um, you would probably, you need at least four days. Um, you got three, three long drives. And usually people that, when you go to Nome, then you can take a flight from Bering Air and fly out to Gamble. I see. <laughs> but safety sound there at Nome is really a magnet for a lot of really interesting water birds so. yeah that that's a great spot um shorebirds and other uh, when i was there like 20 minutes or an hour before they had three great knots a bird i still haven't seen i think they get spectacular there once in a while 
Yeah, I've had I've had it there a couple times. Mm -hmm. Spectacle Eider. Oh, spectacle. Yeah. yeah. So when are you going back? Probably not till the year after next, because next year is booked up with trips that that have been canceled over the last year and a half. <laughs> and my daughter's wedding. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Priorities. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so how'd you like the cliffs at St. Paul? Uh, I thought they were awesome. I mean, yeah. all of the, um, the full Mars and, um, you know, Kitty wakes and all the birds all over the cliffs. And then down below the cliff, there was a dead whale. We were watching Arctic foxes chew on this whale that washed up. I'd like to relate one of the funniest birds I saw when I was in Alaska the one time uh, was on St. Paul, a cliff swallow coming in from the Siberia side. <laughs> it's like your Phoebe. Mm, yeah, that's... People that are out there a lot, when they get an Eastern bird out there, get very excited. Paul Lehman had a like a willow flycatcher out on Gamble. He was more excited about that than the brown shrike. <laughs> that just doesn't seem to make sense, but... I understand. He got excited when we had a female Barrow's Golden Eye uh, there at Gambles. That was his first bird of that. So. Yeah, if you do go to uh, St. Paul Island in the Privilofs, uh, rather than try to do it on your own, it's best to go through the native corporation because if you, they will provide a guide out there, the transportation to get you around, and you can go into many areas that you would not be allowed to go on your own. Yeah, that's that's actually the best tour deal in all of Alaska. Uh, if you fly out to St. Paul to add an extra day, I don't know what it is now. It was only like an extra three hundred dollars. There was as a base of, of like a thousand for the airfare, and then couple hundred dollars for each additional day so you could extend it for a couple of days if you're out there if you've yeah. got the time it, it was probably the best deal i thought of all the tours and trips that i ran into yeah i thought they did a really nice job i got stuck out there which can happen and since it was a mechanical on the plane um air alaska just covered our uh, expenses for the extra day they oh, covered the food, the staying out an extra day, and even the guide service on the Privilof. Nice. nice. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. What a hardship. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they have some of the best burgers leading those uh, uh, out there on St. Paul. I mean, Sula Gibson and some of the others. I, I don't know who all is out there these days, but really yeah. top-notch burgers. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, Gamble has Paul Lehman and who knows who else is helping him at the time, so. Yeah. So one year, a field guides tour got stuck in Nome due to fog for like four or five days. <laughs> I think field guides covered it, but they had to rearrange the trip a bit after that. Well, you just run out to Safety Sound or someplace like that. I'm sure they did, yeah. I had Peristellar's eiders just came right by right there at the mouth of uh, Nome River. And, I mean, we saw thousands of them out at Gamble, but you know, it was sort of nice just right there. Well, thank you, Joe. If there's no other further questions, looks like some people are dropping off. It's a okay. great presentation. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Okay. Great, great thank talk. You. Thank nice you. Talk. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night, guys. Good night, Joe.